Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for coming to this school. I think um, Jonathan Salinger and Robin Salinger are going to join me and I'll call on Ivan also for this um, panel discussion. This is really pretty uh, informal. Um, we wanted to just basically have everyone get to know each other a little bit and then maybe ask you um, a few questions about your background which might be useful for the talks and so on. Um, I think one of the things um, that's useful about this kind of thing is that we don't really have uh, any very fixed agenda for the talks. I mean, we have things planned, but uh, people generally know a lot from the things that they've worked on, things in the past, and uh, if there are things that you want to know about that are not being discussed, then you can just ask and then try to draw on the combined expertise of everyone here to try to address those kind of things. So, um, so keep that in mind, keep asking us about stuff that maybe you want to know about, you haven't heard about, or that people uh, refer to, and you, and you don't know what the background is behind it. And we'll try to um, accommodate that. Oh yes, thank you so much. Um, I should say also thank you, a great deal of thanks to you to Christian for uh, doing all of the local organization with all the students and postdocs here. Um, people from Stellenbosch were kind of introduced, but maybe we could go around and um, uh, with the others, and, and they also maybe include the people who already introduced themselves or were introduced by Christian, just to give um, a little bit of, a, of an idea of what people are working on, what their backgrounds are, where they're from, and so on. So we can start actually with we can start with the panelists, so I'll, I'll start with myself. So, um, I'm a New Zealander, actually. So I'm, I'm very familiar with South Africa from rugby matches. <laughs> this is my first time here, though. But growing up, there was uh, oh, there were always the All Blacks playing on the hard and fast surfaces of the South African rugby grounds. And it's a very long, rivalry <coughs> and uh, friendship that, that developed over that. Um, I, I went to university in New Zealand, University of Canterbury, and I studied physics and mathematics. The tutor in my residence hall was actually in South Africa. And uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's part, this is some, somewhat of a shared heritage in South Africa. I went to uh, the US for graduate school, Caltech, and I had kind of a, a weird background. My, my background is actually in particle physics. My PhD is in particle physics. And I worked on uh, brain unified theories and string theory and all that stuff. I went to a Yale for a postdoc and then MIT, and then to Syracuse for uh, system professorship in like the, the late 80s. Uh, but I was always interested in statistical mechanics and condensed matter physics, and actually the sort of the common themes between the two of them, and I was working on string field theory, which is like fluid membrane and so on, and um, uh, I got interested in real statistical mechanical membranes, and lots of stuff to do with fluctuating surfaces and fixed surfaces and uh, soft matter. And soft matter is fantastic because there are lots of interesting geometries that you get in more abstract parts of physics, but they can be realized experimentally. I like talking to experimentalists and this field is full of wonderful experimentalists like Ivan here. Uh, but if you have a good enough idea, we'll actually work on it and try to keep you honest. You can't set all the dimensions parameters to one. Um, and it can, can be a very nice exchange. And amazingly enough, lots of the abstract uh, concepts that come up in one field of physics come up in another. Okay, so that's 
one of the themes that we have here is the topology and geometry and things like that. Um, this has entered all fields of physics it's intimately connected with symmetry breaking, which we'll talk about one of the profound ideas of the last century is physics. Um, abstract surfaces and manifolds come into soft matter physics and biological physics and material science. Okay? And you can test these things in the lab if you're concrete enough. Um, so we'll, we'll, um, we'll discuss some of those things. So that's, eventually I worked, I worked full time in, uh, in soft matter physics. So that's quite kind of a transition in my own career. And uh, if some of you are thinking about you know, shifting your direction of research, that's something uh, we can discuss if there are pitfalls and their advantages and so on. Um, so, uh, let's, um, maybe, maybe some of the other panelists can say, so start the the back back. Back. yeah, let's start with one no, so sure, I think I better stand up. Hi, I'm Robin Selinger. I teach at Kent State University in Northeast Ohio, near Cleveland. My background is in physics and statistical physics. My areas of research, I would say, are where complex fluids meets material science, pattern formation, applied math, statistical physics. Um, what I'm here to talk to you about in the lectures during the week is um, computational approaches to modeling topological defects in soft materials really helped me to know where I'm starting. How many of you have had a class in statistical physics at the undergraduate level? Anybody? Some. Okay, how many of you have, for instance, performed a, a computer simulation of the Ising model on your own? Just a handful. Okay, so we'll probably start there. How many of you have studied Monte Carlo simulation? A few. Okay, excellent. So um, anyway, as far as uh, career trajectories go, I did my bachelor's degree and PhD at Harvard University in Massachusetts. I continued with a postdoctoral work at UCLA, University of Maryland, briefly at uh, NIST, this, uh, what used to be called the Bureau of Standards, and, and also in Maryland. Then I did my assistant professorship at Catholic University in DC, which is funny because I'm not Catholic. But um, it, was, it was an interesting and wonderful experience. And now, at, in 2005, relocated to Kent State, uh, where I work at the Liquid Crystal Institute. How many of you know anything about liquid crystals? I think everyone's going to be able to raise their hand by the end of the week. All right, that's the next one. Hi, I'm Jonathan Selinger, uh, also from uh, Kent State University. Um, so I'm uh, a, a theoretical physicist. Um, um, I, I collaborate with uh, Robin a lot. My work tends to be a little bit more uh, pencil and paper theory, while hers tends to be a little bit more computational theory. Um, and so um, I, I want to try to present to you a little bit of the, the sort of uh, uh, analytic theoretical way of thinking. Um, so, um, um, what can I say? Uh, I've, I've um, never been to South Africa before, I've never been south of the equator before, but I wanted to come to see about the Coriolis force. Right? So a lot of my research is related to chirality, and so I want to see how that uh, comes into play. We can set up the test of that. that. That'll be great. Okay, so, um, um, what I was thinking of for my, um, my lectures this week uh, are to give a couple of lectures about the um, basics of liquid crystal physics, um, and then um, lectures about more advanced topics and especially modulated states, blue phases, twist bend phases, uh, and and so forth. Um, so for the for the basics, right? Uh, well, I I. I I can see from uh, the show of hands, so right, most of you have seen um, a, a little bit about liquid crystal science in the past. Um, I tried to do more um, detailed questions on Facebook to uh, see if I could prompt any feedback. Um, I got way more likes on Facebook than I got answers <laughs> to my questions. <laughs> So, so I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure, other than that you like questions, 
I don't know much else about you guys. Um, so, um, in, in particular, uh, you know, I'm, I was trying to ask questions about um, nomadic order parameters as an example, right? So, a nomadic liquid crystal has an order parameter that is a tensor. And so, I should have a clicker to identify, right? So, one of the responses is, you know all about this thing, right? Another one response is, you've never heard of, of, of this order tensor, but you know about a director for a pneumatic liquid crystal, right? Um, and, and, yeah, and another response in, right. Turn on the system. You'll turn on the system? Okay. So, A is what? Right? Pneumatic. Pneumatic order tensor. Order tensor. And B is I uh, I know I, I, I only know the pneumatic director. And and C is uh, what is a tensor? No, C is neither. Neither one. C is neither. Neither one. Neither one. And D is what's a tensor. C is neither, and D is what's a tensor. We can turn it into what's a tensor. Okay. So, um, do you, you know how to set this thing up? I have no idea how to do it. It's working now. It's yes. working now. What do we've got in here? Yeah, okay. Buy. So, A is I know all about the pneumatic order tensor. B is I only know about the pneumatic director field. C is I don't know either of those things. And D is what's a tensor? Oh, yeah, so you can what's a vote. <laughs> so, we can set up the clicker system in many different ways, and then you can have them see the answers. Like okay. for this one, I guess it's just polling. So. It's just, just polling. So there's no correct answer here. Right? It's no correct answer. <laughs> so what have we got? 52% say A. 52% say A. Okay. Okay. So we have seen it in that order tensor before. Okay. Great. Well, that's, that's uh, nice to know. But it's a real distribution there. Okay, so I, I'm going to I'm going to try to present a, a range of, uh, of topics, right, in the first two. And so uh, I'm going to start where uh, I'm going to guess that most of you can uh, can pick up, um, um, and uh, but if any of you want me to go faster or slower, you can you can uh, speak up or catch me at a coffee break or something like that, right? Um, and um, I see there is one brave soul who said, what's a tensor? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> lost, lost their bravery there. <laughs> but with, with the, the students who started our program back home, there, there are actually students who come to me privately and say, what's a tensor? Right? And so if anybody would like more background information about what is a tensor, um, um, I'm, I'm happy to go over that. And that, that will not be my main lecture. But if anybody wants an extra credit lecture, extra credit for me, um, <laughs> uh, about, about uh, what's a tensor, uh, I can do that. I've got it all, I know by heart. And so uh, I, I, I can handle that. So. Um, um, Anyhow, I will look forward to um, um, interacting with all of you and would love to make these lectures um, go back and forth. And even if I can't handle the clickers, we can do it in sort of the old tech way of, uh, of, of, of uh, talking. Um, okay, so I'll stop there and pass it on to uh, Ivan. Thank you. So um, I am from the University of Colorado at Boulder, where I am in the pit of physics department, and also we have a liquid crystal uh, materials research center. Um, uh, my research is uh, uh, in soft condensed matter physics and also optics, and uh, related to this summer school, we study uh, topological defects in optics as well as liquid crystals, uh, topologies of colloids, and also interplay of um, topologies of surfaces, fields, and topological defects. 
uh, and this is what my series of lectures in here will be focused on. Um, so um, I hope everybody knows where Colorado and Boulder is. Each time you are in the U.S., very much welcome to visit us. Thank you. Hi, you have heard me speak already. Christian from Vienna, and uh, um, I'm a theorist. And um, some students and postdocs you, you met are, are theorists. I'm not experimentalists. They don't all in, in the same group. Um, I come originally. I originally come from Sedmore, but I went away for many years. Um, uh, sometimes one can hear it in my accent. I spent some time in the UK, um, where I had learned about polymers first time in the Cambridge Laboratory in Cambridge, so where you had your eye camps from last year. And uh, um, I was originally fascinated by the statistical physics of dealing with disorder. And the problem presented to me as a research problem was the one of polymer networks. And uh, this is also what you will hear about uh, when part of what I'll be speaking about. I worked on these things with my PhD and then dropped them rather rapidly because I found them rather difficult to handle and have in recent years picked up the idea of polymer networks again. Um, spent some time in Germany, working at Max Planck Institute, also on polymer systems. Since then I've been here and there have been lots of interesting chemists doing fantastic experiments on porous materials and uh, nano and microstructure polymer systems in uh, University, not in the physics department, but in the chemistry department. So they provide us with lots of ammunition for our pencil and paper machines calculating away in theoretical physics. So um, you'll be also hearing a little bit about entanglements of polymers, which is something we, we, we've been working on. And um, I and Chris will say something to you about how one can possibly think about uh, real polymers getting really entangled. <laughs> so how about we move on to the uh, bartending scope? So let me start with Paul. Can you say something about your what you're working on, where you're from? So uh, um, my name is Paul Ackerman. I work uh, in a Von Smiluk's lab uh, in Boulder, Colorado. And um, uh, I work on various projects involving confined cholesteric liquid crystals. There's some interesting physics that happens when, uh, when you combine these liquid crystals. And so, yeah, I'd be happy to talk about it more with you guys and show you some stuff during the poster session. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Yogesh. I did my PhD in chemical engineering and during my PhD, I did simulation of cholesterol phases to understand defect formation in confined cholesterol phases. As a way of understanding how nature makes material, I specifically worked on plants as well. And after finishing my PhD, I'm now doing my postdoc in University of Southampton, where I'm working on mathematical approximations that makes these simulations faster because the Q tensor. Um, based models for simulation of defects are rather slow and time consuming. So we have some mathematical approximations that can make these simulations faster. That's what I'm working on. I'm Tom Bennett. Uh, I'm also from the University of Southampton. From the Mass Department. I work on uh, a few different projects, more than the progressives. So there's optical measurements of viscosities. What you can get from disturbing a cell, just a plain cell or a crystal with a time bearing electric field, and measurements of the intensity of the light passing through it, and deriving macroscopic models of the crystal cobalt. So, similar thing that if you just do a finite element simulation of this system, it takes tens or hundreds of hours on a supercomputer. But you can derive its models and will give you a lot of information that is on the few Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, I'm Simon. I come from the Technical University of Denmark, which is actually an engineering school. 
or we have a degree in physics and nanotechnology, so that's what I'm doing. I'm a civil grad student. Uh, I think it's called here. I don't know about the American system. Uh, sometimes you tend to say things wrong. It's my fifth year in university. So I'm basically just here to pick up the ideas uh, on what to do for, you, for the final thesis and just to hear what's, what's up in physics. That's it. Hey, I'm Mike. I study at the University of Colorado Boulder. And um, I use uh, electron microscopies to study liquid crystal topologies on the nanoscale. And recently we've been studying um, Bencore liquid crystals and helical nanofilament phases along with twist band phases. Thank you. Let's go. I'm I'm from Durban. I'm studying with my I'm studying with Francesco Pacicciano, is open quantum systems. So <clears throat> actually did my master's in quantum cryptography. But now we're looking at um, evidence of quantum effects in biological systems. So photosynthesis is the primary example. So we'll be looking at energy and electron transfer. <clears throat> but I'll be finishing up my thesis in the next few months. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting some fresh ideas. Excuse me, can I ask you, so what is the primary example? Photosynthesis. So electron and energy transfer.
go to the back of the side back.
Small, so you need a whole lot of them to move this thing around, and we are looking at uh, how we can use some statistical methods to um, work out what forces are involved. So, but I'm also just starting out, so I don't know quite much. Okay. Right, my name is Chris, um, I did my PhD with Chris Gunn, just finished recently. Um, we dealt with theoretical descriptions for entanglement in polymer knots, and I'm soon planning to start a postdoc overseas where we're going to look at correlated fluids in confinement. Okay, good. So, uh, the word topology has come up quite a bit, and I guess it will be discussed now. So, I have one more, we have one more clicker question for you. So, this is about two-dimensional torus as a surface. So this is... There are only four answers. No, 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 it's, there will be a lot. I just need to turn... No, no, I mean there are four <laughs> no, no, options. A, B, C, or D. Does the torus have a handle? Two-dimensional torus. Two-dimensional torus. Two-dimensional torus. Like the surface of a donut. No holes or handles. One hole, one hand. You might have to start this oh, again. Yes? Our both statuses are going to run, which means mm -hmm. you need to reset. Yeah, yeah mine too. You need to start the, uh, start the voting. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you for letting me Okay, well, I think I've got to do that. But who did you vote for? <laughs> So by the way, we have more students whom I already saw here, but I don't know if they somehow skip in this session. <laughs> um, so I hope you will become more students. Maybe they didn't mind the book. Lecturers are allowed to vote. We don't have clickers. You should have picked it up with your package. Uh, our package was handed out to us when we walked in. Can we get them involved?
Okay, for this, so for this problem, you have to be. Yeah, so this says that as you take a circle and you sweep it around a surface, you, know, you make a surface of revolution from a circle so it closes on itself. Two dimensions means that the, um, the space requires two coordinates to describe it. the two directions in which you can move from any given point on that space. Can I ask another question? <laughs> yes, all questions are around. What's a two-dimensional sphere as opposed to a three-dimensional sphere? Yes. Okay. Is it just the surface of the sphere? <laughs> the n-dimensional sphere is the set of m plus one, m plus one coordinates. Because sum of the squares of the coordinate with some fixed number like the radius squared or one one. So you start with n plus one coordinates and you put on one constraint that makes it n independent coordinates of the system. So that makes it an n-dimensional surface. So the, the surface of the Earth is approximately a two-dimensional sphere. Yes. And you can uh, um, you can model it that way. And an Arnold's book is an appendix. Actually, models it as a two-dimensional torus. <laughs> but uh, you, where you can predict uh, um, that the, the, the basically the weather is uh, you know, unpredictable over a certain number of days from that from that model, but modeling the atmosphere. Anyway. So in this case, so, the, so we'll, we'll get to discuss all this with topological defects also, but S1 is just a circle. So S2 is um, the surface of a ball. But hollow, just the surface. Yeah, just the surface of the ball. So, when we, so people often talk about the, you know, the full ball, all the points up. To an including the surface is spherical, but it's not really very good terminology mathematically. Um, so this is S2, and then, then we can have high dimension. Can you draw S3? <laughs> <laughs> it's the three dimensional surface of a four dimensional object. No, it's kind of well. <laughs> Not very well. Anyway. Um, actually, in all these uh, spaces will come up when we discuss. Defects, in particular, uh, when we compare things with uh, magnetic order or polar order, uh, with things that have liquid crystalline like order, where there's inversion symmetry, and variations of all these will, will come up here. They have different defect structures and different properties, and so on. But anyway, for the problem we were discussing, you start with this uh, two dimensional sphere. Okay. And then two dimensional surfaces are really nice because they're basically being categorized. So what, what, what can you do? You can take one of these things and you can cut a hole in it. So if, you, if you cut a hole in it, that makes a boundary. That's the distinguishing characteristic. Or you can basically have, make two holes and join them with a cylinder. So this is a, a handle. And that's something you can grab onto. So that gives you the torus. But the hole is a boundary between the outside and the inside. Yes. Okay. So the, this two-dimensional torus, yeah. uh, the T2 is the name for the two-dimensional torus. It has no boundary. So it's a mathematical operation taking the boundary of the space, the like derivative. The boundary of the two-dimensional torus is zero. That's so that's how you really know it doesn't have a hole, any holes. So the boundary is like the edge of the hole. Yes. The porthole. The edge of the porthole. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. That will be, this you can pull out into a disc. So you pull that out, and it goes to the edge, and everything else goes in the middle, and you get this. So there you can see, so the, this becomes the boundary. But you just 
assuming this material is made out of chewing gum or something. Yeah, so that's where the topology comes in. That assumes you can just continuously be formal. You can do more abrupt things to it, like tear it. Do discontinuous things to it. And then you need something more general than topology. Because topology is very, very crude. Um, yeah. But um, it applies in many situations. Alright, so uh, do you guys have any questions for us? We may or may not get Before we get to sound for that other nice form of soft matter. I also want to white beer, wine. By the way, what vegetable were liquid crystals discovered as anyone know? Vegetable? Yeah. Carrot? Is that it? Carrots? Carrots, yes. Where were the crystals discovered in carrots? Well, it's back with Reininger in the 1880s. He was what we would call a biochemist today. But he was actually really interested in photosynthesis. He was wanting to know whether carrot juice you know, has carotene in it. And uh, he wanted to feel some connection with its properties and uh, photosynthesis. <laughs> But he ended up discovering that at these two phase transitions where it could go from a liquid to something else and then a solid, two melting temperatures that Jonathan will talk about. And he had to go to a physicist, Leminger, to um, an expert in optics and other things to try to get the answer because it was very, very complicated, very, very subtle. So this was basically exhibiting the matter phase with characters. Why he was so obsessed with character. Carrots are also long and skinny enough to make a matter case one. That's also true. <laughs> Works on multiple levels. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not carbon. I have one more question for the students, if I, if I Okay, have. yeah, well, yes. So, so um, as we um, prepare lectures with PowerPoint or with writing on the board, I wanted to ask, can you all read what is written on the board? Because when I was sitting in the third row, I could not see a thing on the board, but I'm an old man. So, for you young people, can you actually read what's written on the board? Yes. Even in the back, people are nodding. All right. Well, well I might, so my first lecture is going to be on some general ideas that occur in soft matter. That's in, that's in keynote. But the second and third will, will be on the blackboard. So. A, you should try to sit as close as possible. But B, I will, I will be using this uh, 19th century technology. Mark, you can also try my boogie board if you want. Okay. It's not perfect. Let's give it a try. Yeah, to sure. it. yeah I'm not perfect. So there are no other uh, compelling questions. Can we take these home with us or leave them here? Okay, I think we'll take them. Take them with us. Okay. okay. Is there anything we do? Ah! Yes, Ivan has another question. So the system is of three uh, worlds. The question is here. Mark can read it for you. Not very was originally introduced to explain the structure of atoms and diversity of the numbers. Fashion and design needs. How far the three levels you can apply two bases, classify topological defects and different crystals. You can explain everything I've known. So there is a hint for you.
Everybody wants to buy one of them. Do we have lots? Oh, 20. Yeah, so, uh, well, the correct answer obviously is yes, but it's interesting that. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> but it's interesting that uh, uh, here in the student center we have this uh, barber shop. Uh, so you could have thought that one of the answer, other answers was correct too. But uh, the. So this is not alluding to correct answer, but uh, uh, the North theory originally was developed to explain the uh, physics of atoms right before they were understood. Uh, it was proposed to, there was a proposal by Lord Kelvin and Peter Feit and others at the time um, that uh, the atoms in the periodic table of Mendeleev as we know could have been nothing else but not in, uh, not at vortices, as you can see them here. So this, as we know, turned out to be not correct, but that was an interesting proposal at that time. Okay, good. So I think we can can we adjourn upstairs? We can adjourn upstairs and. Uh, Thank you. Uh, just follow the stand of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.